recession or not. We're going to be joined by Art Laffer. He's chief investment officer of Laffer Investments and former economic advisor to President Reagan. And Peter Schiff, he's president of Euro-Pacific Capital. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Peter, I want to start with you. Although there are more and more people saying that the U.S. economy will be in a recession next year, it is still a minority position. Why do you think that a recession is coming? Just how bad is it going to be? I think it's going to be pretty bad, and whether it starts in 07 or 08, I think, is immaterial. And I also think it's going to last not just for quarters, but for years. See, the basic problem with the U.S. economy is we have too much uh, consumption and, and borrowing and not enough production and savings. And what's going to happen is the American consumer is basically going to stop consuming and start rebuilding his savings, especially when he sees his home equity evaporate. And when you have the economy 70% consumption, you can't address those imbalances without a recession. You know, rather than the recession being resisted, it should really be embraced because the disease is all this debt finance consumption. Huh. The cure is that we stop consuming and start saving and producing again, and that's a recession. And sometimes, you know, medicine tastes bad, but you've got to swallow it. Art Laffer, you hear him, he says the consumer is going to slow down in order to rebuild the savings. And you know that two-thirds of the American economy is driven by the consumer. Do you believe that? No, I don't believe any of it whatsoever, Michelle. Excuse me. But, you know, what he's saying is that savings is way down in this country, but wealth has risen dramatically. The United States economy has never been better shape. There is no tax increase coming in the next couple of years. Monetary policy is spectacular. We have freer trade than ever before. And not only that, but there are no incomes policies things here. I, I think Peter's just totally off base, and I don't think it's going to be... I mean, I just don't know where he's getting his stuff. The well, one of us, is, one of us is off base, but it's, it's definitely not me. I mean, it's not wealth that's increased in the last few years. We haven't inc increased our productive capacity. All that's increased is the paper values of our stocks and real estate. But that's not real wealth, no more than the NASDAQ was wealth. When, when you see the stock market come down and the real estate bubble burst, all that phony wealth is going to evaporate. And all that's well, going to be left is all the debt that we accumulated to foreigners. Peter, uh, I'm going to take a that. bet with you on this one. I'll, I'll bet you a penny on this one that if you'll sign a letter saying that if you're wrong, you'll, you'll sign a letter that you were wrong to me in this. But you're just way off base. There is nothing out there that tells us we're going to have a nice slowdown, but it's not going to be a All right, crash. let me ask you this. I'll a lot of folks out there penny. point... Big question. Will homes be worth more or less in 2007? Tom, what do you think? You're going to see uh, prices go up about 10%. Here's why. Because you're going to come into a regular, normal market, and a regular, normal market, so that's about what kind of appreciation you get. The is pr home prices up 10% <laughs> in the coming year. Peter, what do you say? Well, today's home prices are completely unsustainable. They were bid up to these artificial heights by a combination of temporarily low adjustable rate mortgage payments, by a complete you know, absence of any lending standards, and by speculative buying. And what's going to happen in 2007 is a lot of these artificially low arm payments are going to re be reset upward. You're going to start to see uh, both the government and the lenders <coughs> reimposing lending standards and tightening up on credit. And you're going to see a lot of the speculative buyers turn into sellers. And these sky-high real estate prices are going to come crashing back down to earth. I, I, first of all, I have no idea what Peter Schiff is talking about. I agree with Tom. I think they're going to be up, probably up to about 10 percent. What artificial lending standard are you talking about? What's word to Peter? Go Most first. of the profits that people have in real estate are going to vanish, just like the profits in the, in the, in the dot coms <laughs> in 1999-2000. It's a fantasy. People can't sell their house. The inventories are exploding all over the country. Houses are on the market for six months. A year, there's no bidders. So, uh, the price right. is going to fall through the floor. You guys I, are deluding yourself. We heard, it. we heard it loud and clear from all of our palace. We thank you very much. And Stein, you say this could be a perfect storm for buyers. What do you mean? I mean that the uh, credit crunch is way overblown. Uh, the financials are being uh, given away. They're so unbelievably cheap. Uh, the uh, Many of the resource companies have gotten really whacked and are cheap at this point. Uh, the, the, the credit, the prime time, sorry, not prime time, the subprime problem is a problem, but it's a tiny problem in the context of this economy. The storm is a problem, but it's a tiny problem. Meanwhile, it's as if nuclear war has struck the financials and really struck the whole market. It's a buying opportunity, especially for the financials, maybe that I've never seen before in my entire life. Trace, this is just getting started. It's not just subprime. You know, this is a problem for the entire mortgage industry. It's not just people with bad credit that committed to mortgages they can't afford. It's not just people with bad credit who are going to see their home equity vanish. And it's not limited to mortgage credit. Americans are going to have a difficult time borrowing money to buy cars, to buy furniture, to buy appliances. You know, foreigners around the world have been lending us money for years. They're now finding out that we can't afford 
afford to repay. This is going to be an enormous credit crunch. The party is over for the United States. We cannot continue borrowing to live beyond our means and, and consuming foreign products. It's you must over. be a left right at a party. Huh? No, I'm pretty, I'm no, pretty okay, fun at parties. Okay. I don't know. I don't just talk about this. Stuart, dollars but, uh, down. We, we have, but subprime is tiny. Subprime is a tiny, tiny it, blip. It's not <laughs> tiny. And again, it's not just subprime. It's the entire mortgage market. Right? Every, All right. Well, Tracy, you're, you're disagreeing with simply to wrong. Ben's well, point. you're simply wrong about that. No, I'm not. P you're simply to, wrong. To Ben's yeah. point, well, the defaults for the whole mortgage market are tiny. No, but it's good. just give it time. Wait till all these mortgages reset. Wait till people realize. Well, so you're saying, okay, so you're saying it's going to be yet to come. Charles, you were just speaking. What do you think? I think volatility is going to be here until we can look at the books of major financials. So that means until okay. the next round of earnings. But I think the worst is over. Ben. Well, I, I think stocks will be a heck of a lot higher a year from now than they are now. Well, Tracy? Yeah, but we have more volatility to go, at least through September. Stuart? The big banks, the central banks, still have plenty of big guns to fire. They'll fire them when necessary. The worst is over. Peter, you, you know, I guess razor blades are in order? The worst is yet to come. The fundamentals are not sound. They're awful. If the fundamentals were sound, we wouldn't be having these problems. All right, fair enough. Hey, you get to buy blue chip stocks at discount prices, but our pros say you can do that right now. It's time to get more for your money. Ben, what have you got, my friend? Well, the financials, as I keep saying, are just super bargains. I particularly like uh, Merrill Lynch, which is an astonishingly well-run company. You know, a couple of days ago, it was trading at barely more than seven times earnings. Financials typically trade at a low P, but this is a joke. This stock is, they might as well be putting it in cereal boxes and giving it away. That's how cheap it is. <laughs> Charles, what do you think of that? Uh, yeah, I like the financials, too. Merrill isn't my top pick in the group. I think Bear is probably the cheapest, although the riskiest, and uh, some of the others are better. But, you know, the financials are a great place, absolutely. So what are you doing, Charles? I, again, like Ben, like the financials. I like Goldman Sachs. It's like getting Dolce Gabbana on sale. This is the creme de la creme of Wall Street. It's cheap. These but, uh, are the... Isn't it still up substantially year over year, though? It is down, and it's probably actually going to go further, and I think that people should start nibbling at this thing. Peter, what do you yeah. think Look, stay away from the financials. They're toxic. They're not cheap. They're oh. expensive. You think wow. they're at low you, you think they're at heart well, let me finish. So oh, wait, let me finish. You think they're at low PEs. They have no earnings. Their earnings are gonna disappear. I remember they a year have ago no when earnings, their earnings are oh, huge. Ben, ben, last year when people were talking about last Last year when people were recommending home builders and they were talking about they're at five or six times earnings, I said those earnings are fantasy. They're not going to be like here. fantasy about that. They're no, I'm talking, no, I'm, no there's, a, there's a lot of losses coming up in the future. These financials are going to get hit and they're going to get hit hard. Don't believe what these forecasts are for the future. Right. No. no, it's not. That's they're going lower. All right, Peter, I wish we had more time with you. I know you want to continue that expose on Santa Claus. Peter, you agree with that? Well, I think it's going to be an issue, but I think the economy in general is going to be a bigger issue. I think certainly by November it'll be obvious to just about everybody that we're in a pretty severe recession. I think a lot of the voters already know that. Just some of the people here in Wall Street haven't figured it out yet. But I think that the recession, the economy in general, is going to be a much bigger issue. And unfortunately, I think you know it's not a tax cuts that we need. We really need a lot of spending cuts. The government has to cut spending because if they cut taxes and then just print the difference, what we get is inflation instead. So we have a little bit more money in our paychecks, but we have to pay a lot more for food. We have to pay a lot more for energy. And of course, eventually, we're going to see a big increase in interest rates as a result of all this inflation. All right, Charles, the crystal ball. Well, you know, if it's between boom and bust, I'll go with boom. I know the first half of the year is going to be tough. There's no doubt about it. But I think by the second half of the year, all these interest rate cuts will work their way through the system. Obviously, I think the housing market will be a lot better than it's been 2007. The auto market, jobs, unemployment about 4.7%. And I think, Peter, inflation is going to be held in check. What do you like, Charles? Uh, Washington Mutual, and I'll add the caveat up front. This is a high-risk play, right? We're catching a falling knife. No okay? kidding. What do you got for us? Well, I think in general people should stay away from stocks. It's going to be another bad year. Uh, I'm recommending the ETF GLD. I mean, gold has been doing incredibly well. As I mentioned earlier, it was up 33% uh, last year. I think gold is going to go over $1,000 an ounce next year. I think U.S. stocks so all are going stock, down. All those stocks I think the Dow is going to go to 16000 but the big winner will be NASDAQ. So I think everyone should have some exposure. To the Even now, after Even the run-up we've had. Oh, absolutely. What do you got going well, I, it might be a big year, just big losses. And oh, you know, I think uh, I think what's going to happen now is we're going to see the subprime type loss scenario unfolding in other asset classes, such as bonds backed by auto loans, credit card debt. And that's really going to, you know, pull the rug out from under the consumer. When not only can he borrow money to buy a house, but he, he can't borrow money to buy a car. He can't use his credit card at a department store because the people who hold all this debt and Wall Street securitize these bonds the same way they did with the subprime bonds. They're going to lose a lot of money, and it's going to be a bigger credit card. All right.